So for higher order functions, right, there are, I think there are two concepts that uh, need to be understood. First is nested functions, which are functions inside another function, which I think most of you have understood. I see some of you actually using it in your exams, eh, no, sorry, in your assignments, and we'll be explaining further like how a nested function is different than a standard function. Uh, another thing is uh, we're going to be talking about lambdas. It's basically a nameless function. And I think lambdas are the things that kind of can be quite uh, difficult to understand. So for that, I'll be talking about lambdas first. I'm going to review what a lambda is, and then we can go through the questions together. So this is a lambda. As you guys can see, um, it's just very simple. This lab, For example, this lambda is a function where it takes in three arguments and evaluates it to a number. And then, um, it's app, you know, to use lambdas, you simply just have lambda and then the inputs. In which it's, you know, when you, usually when you do it, right, it's, this place is replaced by an actual function name rather than a lambda. So in case that's, okay, that's not important. Right? That's not really important. Okay, so there's this function definition. So I want to show you that these two things right, actually are the same thing. Uh, these two things are actually the same thing where in here, f is equal to lambda a, b, c, a plus b. So like in this case, f is the na function name. Lambda is just a keyword. Here is def. A, B, C is the parameters and the body. So lambdas is much simpler, much more primitive. You cannot really do any much calculations because it's all in one line. And yeah, basically this is all the same. I think this is quite important to understand that if you assign lambda to a function, right, it just behaves the same way as a function when you define it as def. Uh, this concept is important because I'm going to use that quite a lot later on in explaining about higher order function. So that's all about lambdas. Any questions about lambdas? If there are no questions, perhaps give me a thumbs up. Okay. All right. Maybe some of you are still quite uncertain. The best way to learn about lambdas is simply to go into the questions. But before we go to lambda questions, we'll go into higher order function. and go to nested functions first. Okay, so this is a nested function that you see in your tutorial worksheet. We have max power, and then we have another. We actually have an inner function called count right over here. Right, and which is you can see it's called it is called twice in this part and and this part. Okay, so uh, I think the question is like what is the value of max power to one thousand? Can you answer it in the Zoom chat? Yes, correct. The answer is 10. But I do hope that you guys actually tried it, not uh, actually like uh, run it manually rather than running it in the computer. Now, for the benefit of everyone, I'll try to show you guys once how to actually run this. Um, so max power 2000, right? I'll write it as MP to 1000. It will give me count. It will, this one, right, will return me count 10, count 1, 0. But then here we know that MP to 1000, it means it sets the value N at 2 and EXP at 1000. Right? Uh, at count 1, 0, right, then I'll run the function count, which takes it M and CNT, means here M is 1, CNT is one th uh, 0. If m is greater than exp, in this case m is 1, exp, since the exp does not exist inside count, we'll look some the value outside count. And yay, we found 1, which is 1000. 
So this is false. It will not return count. It will return count m times n, which is 1 times 2, which is 2. And 1 plus count, 1 plus 0 is 1. Hence, it will count to, count to 1. So we have a reset of values here. And then we'll repeat the process. If m is 2, it's not greater. It will give me count 4, 2, 4, it's not, count 8, 3, and so on. And if you can see, the pattern here is that the first part over here is just a 2 to the power of n. And here is the actual n. And it tries to get where to a point where 2 to the power of n is greater than equals to the exp of 1000. So in this case, the answer is 10. Okay. Ooh, okay. So in this case, what is uh, fun here is that, uh, first of all, um, the variables here, n and exp, can actually be used inside the enclosed function, the nested function here. That's the one unique part. Um, another thing is that, um, another thing is that, uh, what uh, nested functions are, cannot be accessed from the outside, so you cannot really do a call count here. Count is actually very exclusive inside this max power function. So I think that's what differentiates a nested function and a normal function is that first, in a nested function, you get to use the variables that are defined inside the function. And for you cannot call the function outside, which sometimes you want to do that. So in this case, what is max power 3 and 1000? Can anyone tell me the answer? Right, wow. that you guys are very ready to answer. All right. Okay, so I think as I mentioned before, the easy question is, uh, which variables live in the scope of count but do not, but not a ver local variable of count? What? What are the variables that live in the scope of count but not a local variable of count? There's exp, there's someone answering n. Okay, the answer is actually both. Both n and exp. Both here, right, you can see the thing that in the red circle on the top right corner, um, n and exp both exist inside count, but then it's not in stock, but not it's local. So in you can access the value of n and exp in max power as well. You can see that the value of n and exp is used in here. And here, so it is uh, lives in the scope of count, but that it's not local because it's actually defined here outside count. All right, that's all for this. So wait, the parameter at the start is always considered global variables. They're not global in that sense. They're global inside here, like inside whatever is under max power. They're not global, like global everywhere, but they're just global inside the function max power. Don't get yourself confused, okay? Does every function needs a return statement? No, they don't. If the, not every function requires a return statement. Okay. So next up, we have uh, another nested function, which kind of is more complicated. As we can see, we already um, getting involved with lambdas over here. Right. So my question is, what's the answer for F1? And what's the answer for the first part over here? Uh, okay, the answer is 30. Yes. Um, why is it so? Now maybe like for those of you who are a bit confused, now we can go 
Okay, for those of you who answered 30 none, right? You guys must be cheating already from your other tutorials, but no, this part is not 30 none, okay? It's for the next question. But then uh, let's go through again. Um, this is usually what I do, and I actually learned it from Prof. Adi. So when you guys are very confused, I mean, that's actually pretty complicated. What you want to do is actually, you want to replace the lambdas with a variable. So in this case, um, I will, you know, like variable substitution in math. So I'll maybe I'll say like, let theta be lambda x, y, x, x times 2 plus, okay, that's bad, uh, 2x plus 2y. Hence, I can actually replace this entire statement over here with theta. So f1 is partial theta, in which um, partial theta returns the function action. But then, What's unique is that OP is already defined as theta. Hence, this is theta. Okay. Under action one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we actually try to break this one, right? F1 is 5 to 10, right? F1 is 5 to 10. F F1, 5, 10. It will return us this multi action. And action, what it does is actually it prints OP, which is in this case theta, theta 5, 10. And theta 5, 10, remember theta is this function over here. So uh, theta 5, 10 is lambda xy, 2x plus 2y, 5 and 10. Oops. Wait insert the value of x and y inside, as we'll get 2 times 5 plus 2 times 10, 10 plus 20, which is 30, as expected. Is, is everyone clear on this? Uh, can I get a thumbs up if everyone's clear on this, on the step-by-step -step process of getting this? Okay, sorry, Mr. Ace, can you explain this again? Um, I'm a little lost. Okay, okay. Um, okay, that's pretty long. Okay. Um, okay, so in this case, um, my first, my step zero, right? My step zero is, okay, let me, yeah. Okay, here my step zero is I uh, actually can lambdas return string other than just compute values? Yes, lambdas can return anything actually. Lambdas can return lambdas as well. So in this case, right, uh, I think I'll explain first from the beginning. Uh, so in this case, what my step zero is that I replace lambda with a variable theta. So I store it here, up here, let theta be x, y. So it just simplifies my code. Lah. So I can define f1 as partial uh, theta and we know partial theta right partial theta over here okay. uh, partial theta returns function action right here partial partial returns action so it will return this function over here okay please remember that the action that is written here is a function not the actual output so we'll leave it that way. We'll just define OP as theta, but then we'll leave it that way. And then uh, we'll start executing F1, 5, 10. And then F1, 5, 10, F1 is action, right? So we'll replace F1 with action. Here we have action 5, 10. And then what action 5, 5 10 does is that it prints this theta over here, uh, this statement over here. So it's print OP, AB. Right, print OP, AB. Then I'll substitute OP with our actual OP variable, which is theta. Right, the partial theta is, partial, is equals to partial OP. So OP here is theta. So I'll replace OP with theta, theta 510. Right, 
So I have theta 510 already, and theta is already defined as this function as we earlier substituted. So we're going to substitute the theta back into the e equation. So like theta xy is equals to 2x plus 2y, 510, and then I'll just insert the value of x and y, insert, and you get 30. Okay. Uh, in this nested function, why doesn't the function work if I remove the return action? Okay, because if you remove this particular line over here, right, return action, say I remove return action, right, means that when I call partial this, right, it will never call return anything in return. It will just be none. This partial, right, over here, this return statement, right, is the thing that actually gives back a value. If this statement doesn't exist, right, it means that partial will not call anything out inside this function and it will just give us none. Okay, were I going too fast? I think I got it too fast, but then it's okay. Um, uh, yes, basically partial returns action. Okay. Is there anyone that's is still lost? I feel that some of you are still lost. Okay. Um, I think it's okay if you guys are a bit lost, but you guys can later on when we actually uh do with more questions, I think we should be doing better. It's okay. Um okay. Um for those of you okay. Because the next question is a little bit more mind blowing. Um the next part is a little bit uh harder. is that we actually like enclose another function in it. So like F2 is partial F1. So if you can actually, if you expand it by a bit, right, um, it's going to be like, we have like, say, uh, partial is P, so, uh, damn it. If partial is P, so it's going to be like P, P, then the theta. Okay, I'll still represent this lambda as theta. That's bad. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be a bit double. So I think we'll just break it down first. So say f f two five ten. Um. Okay. Now I'll be running a bit slow. So try to follow up. But if you cannot follow up, it's okay. Um. This one is not easy. So for those of you who answer 30 and none, so actually that's the answer for this question, 30, none. Now, I'll try to explain how we actually get the none over here and why is it 30 first before none. Bear with me, okay? So F2, 5, 10, right? F2 is um, partial F1, 5, 10. Okay, so partial F1, F, if we can remember, partial F1 will give us action. Right, but then this is no ordinary action where um, this partial right will actually store the OP as F1. Okay. And the, hence the action return action defined is print f1 5 10 now if you kind of see what if you remember earlier right f1 itself will actually have another action so in this case i will actually write it i'll give it a sign that this one is op2 and action2 okay to indicate that this is the action that is called by f2 okay i'll repeat what I'm gonna do is I actually give OP2, action two, and call it action two to differentiate it with the action that we're gonna call later. 
Now, as we can see, action two will give uh, action two will give us print f one five ten. Hence, now we need to evaluate what is the value of f one five ten, right? So f one five ten, I write it here. It's gonna give us action, but this one is action one. In which uh, action one of five ten, in which the OP one is the lambda earlier, right? This you remember this one is F one, and that's the lambda. So this one in this case action one will give us print oops print theta five ten. So action one will give us print theta five ten, in which in this case we know that this is thirty. That's because we know uh, after we got the value of thirty. We will print it. And this part will print the code. It will be it will print this part over here. Now uh, we are we are done with action one. After it's printed, action one is finished. Now the question is now um, after we're done with this, F1 is done, right? F1 is done. Now we'll go back to this part over here. Now, so what was the value of F1510? And the answer is none. Why? If you notice right here, F1510 F1, calls in action one, and action one prints. Right. But then action one, not F1, never actually returns the value back. Okay? Action actually never have any return statement, return something that actually gives the value back to F1 and F for F1 to pass it back to uh, action 2 or F2. So in this case, right, uh, because it returns nothing, what it returns is actually the value of none. Remember in earlier lectures, the difference between return and print statement. So this is the case where in this case, right, it does not have any print statement. So this action over here, this function action, right, uh, when it is being evaluated, it will return no value at all and will be evaluated as none. So here it will be evaluated as none and it will be printed so. So this is here and this is here. So in this case, 30 is executed first because we uh, before we actually execute before we execute this particular line over here, we actually executed this line when it is evaluating the value inside the brackets. After F1 is finished evaluate, has finished evaluated, the F1510 will be replaced by none because they return no value and then we execute that line where we print none. Okay. I hope you understand because that explanation is actually quite confusing if you cannot follow. And I'm okay if you cannot follow. Uh, if possible, try it in your own time. So with that, I want to ask, uh, who is already clear on this question? Can you just give me a thumbs up? If you're not clear, just clap. The Deus is not clear, Mutu is not clear, Yeche is not clear. Okay, um, Ethan is not clear. If you have any questions, just ask. Okay, if it's okay, um, why does it return two values? In fact, these are th these two right are not return state values. Okay, again, these two are not return values. These two are the output results of the print statements in F one and F two. Okay, okay. Uh, Right, F1 
five ten right it prints 30 but it returns none that's why f print f1 five ten prints none that is the correct explanation and again these are not return values these are the 30 and none are are the results of the two print statements one inside f1 and one inside f2 If you already if you have your answered question right, at least can you say something in the Zoom chat so I know that oh you guys actually got it, got the gist of it. Okay, okay, good for you, good for you. Questions? So if it isn't a print statement but a return statement, it will just return 30. Uh short answer is yes. If you change the print return. Print to return the whole thing will work. What do you mean the whole thing will work? Technically, this works. But yeah. So let's do some wishful thinking here. Let's just do some wishful thinking. Huh? So everyone, please follow. Let's do some wishful thinking in the scenario where we change this statement, print to return. Right. So what's going to happen here is that in this case, it will not print, it will return. So when we execute F1, when we try to execute F1 right here, what we do is we return the value of 30. So when, when F1 is executed, it, the, this value 30 will be returned here, 30. And this one is return, right? Return as well. So because no print statement has been executed, when we execute this, we will return 30. Hence, this will only give the output of 30. So if you change the print to return, okay. So wait, so 30 comes from print from F1? Yes, correct. 30 comes from print from F1. Then what's the new Y value? Oh, sure, 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 sure. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, hi, Matthias. Um, I, is it also okay if I can like, uh, un, I, I, un, uh, switch on my camera also? Um, sure, sure. Do whatever that makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Okay, so like I have this, uh, I wrote this, uh, I don't know if it's like mirrored, if it's a problem. Um, well, I must, wait, 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 um, be patient. Wait, let me stop sharing so I can see your screen. Is it mirrored? Uh, no, it's not. All right. Yeah. What can yeah, so I do? In this case, right, is so my, my understanding is that because it's not a return value, when it becomes action 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 thirty, right? Mm -hmm. Um because it's not a return value, it doesn't end at the at the nested action, right? Uh pardon? I mean okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna say that your your derivation is correct. This is a correct derivation. As long as you can def as if you derive it this this way, as long as you um do the inner part first. That's okay. Okay, so the the first action, the first action theta would print out the thirty value, right? The Correct. nested action thirty will print out the first Correct. thirty value, and okay. because it's a print and not a return, it doesn't end there, right? Mm, it will so, just return none. So action theta, right, will be replaced by none. Okay, okay. So the action of the action theta will return none in this case, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. That's a very good. Not bad. That, that was a, actually quite a good derivation as well. All right. Um, okay. All right. Um, so for those of you who are confused, it's okay. Um, just try to derive it on your own paper and perhaps later on rewatch the video because I need to move on to the next part. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, sorry. Uh, right on the right page. Oops, not. I think I'm not. Ah, okay. All right. Um. Okay. Uh. Next up, we'll have the next part of the tutorial, which is the actual. Which, if you see in the tutorial worksheet, is actually on the bottom part. Oh, before before that, question. Um. Uh, which variable lives in the scope of action but not in the local in action? Just type it in the Zoom chat. Uh, okay. 
okay, um, x, y, any other answers? What, which variables live in the scope of action, but not in the local action? All right, well done. You guys are also OP. Yes, you guys are so OP about this. So um, it's op actually OP, actually the same concept as the previous one. So that, uh, no, x, y is technically not a variable that live in the score of action, because like x, y here is actually just like a function, a lambda. So it's nothing. Okay. Please don't ask you, okay? I think you can make it. Um, all right, next up we have lambdas. Uh, um, okay, so um, I think we'll go to the first question. This, is, this was your first question. This is the first question, right? Um, lambda a b c a plus b plus c is one two. Now, if you okay, I think this this question right here tries to show that this will actually produce a, a very an error, in which the error is actually a type error. As you can see here, type error lambda means sing one required positional argument c. So this is exactly the same as um. No, I'm I can guarantee that you don't need to remod. Okay, you don't need to remod. So in this case, type it will produce a type error. Okay, it's a very specific error, which is a type error. It's the same as you know, like when you do functions like uh full uh it's actually very the same, like when you do like full a b, but then when you do it, it's just like full five, it's gonna be create the same error in this case. So it's very the same like functions. Next up we have lambda a b, lambda a, lambda b a plus b. So in this case, what it does is that it takes one argument a, and it actually returns a function. It returns another lambda. So in this case, uh, it returns another lambda, in which lambda uh, takes one argument b and then returns the results a plus b. Okay. So in the lower case, it's more complex. It takes uh, it takes it one output. And it returns another function in which in the function works by taking in one parameter and returning another function. Okay. Hey, how do you know your midterm uh, results? Uh? The midterm results has not been released yet. Anyways, um, yeah, um, that's the case. So I think uh, this is an example. This is the derivation for the answer. Um, who are you anyway? So this is the answer. Uh, this is the one of the questions where we actually try to derive a lambdas. Um, we in this case we have. Uh, in this case, when you try to evaluate this over here, x will evaluate as a function. Because remember, when we try to um, insert the values, in this case, uh, uh, insert the value of a equals to 1, it will give us the value of lambda over here, hence the lambda. So in this case, x is still a function. Okay, But then when you actually do x3 uh what happens is that what happens is that uh, we actually insert the value of 3 into a plus uh, to the lambda as it will evaluate as 4 okay um so in this case like i think another way to derive it is perhaps we can do like um um what we can do is um Lambda A, Lambda B, A plus B, right? And then, uh, yeah, one. Uh, guys, can you tone it down in the chat? Guys, can you tone it down in the chat? I cannot type. But we insert one into it, and then it basically gives us this return value, which is B1 plus B, okay? This should be the value of x. You just keep on inserting the values as per normal. Okay. Uh, all right. 
So yeah, this is also the another way to break it down. Okay. Okay, where does the uh, okay okay uh where yeah. okay where does the b value come from? Uh, okay, so in this case x is lambda here, right? X is uh, lambda b one plus b. So where does the value of b comes from? Well, if there's no values as inserted, um, then uh, this lambda x will remain as a lambda. So we can see actually at this particular line. This particular line, x3. Now this value of 3 will be the new value of b then. Okay, so this will be since this function over here will take in a uh, one parameter and we have one parameter here, then this will be the value of b. Is that clear, Ethan? Um, okay. Okay, guys, please try to keep it. Yeah, it is not specifically B. Okay, guys, please try to keep it civil in the chat. Okay. Um, I think some of you guys are try still trying to learn. So yeah, please try to keep it civil. Not it is not So how do you find it? I think uh, okay. Later during midterms discussion. Um, midterms discussion. Uh try to give me some higher order function and we'll try to actually break it down. Okay, so in this case, we have this part. This is the way that the prof does it. So in this case, if you see the question below here, it will insert the value one by one. In this case, we'll insert the value of one into A and then it will give us lambda B A plus B, which is evaluated here. Lambda B A plus B where A is one. Technically, you can immediately replace the value of a here if you want. And then two here right, will be inserted where it will return a plus b, where the value of b and a is 2 and 1. Hence, it's 1 plus 2 and 3. Okay. Hi, Fred. Okay. So, I think another. So, in this case, you can see that the. This is how it is actually uh, consuming the values. In this case, one will be consumed in this stage and two will be consumed in the next stage. So if you can see, uh, the, the way we, con we process it is consecutive applications of function is treated as left associative. So we process it from the left to right, not right to left. So I think this is the very final example. I think this one is uh, quite a good example. So I think we'll do it in two ways. We'll try to do it uh, first as in the prof's way. And then another, I'll try to do it in my way. So like you guys can actually pick whichever style you want to do. So this is the prof's way. Uh, you can see that, um, you can see that um, we try, first we need to identify the brackets. So in this case, this is the brackets, this is the brackets, this is the brackets, okay? Uh, the, br the brackets that we need to identify is the ones that are outside the bracket, that are like, you know, like, enclosed, that, the ones that are like the first layer lah. So imagine like a list, right? We want to identify the boxes for the list, but not the list inside the list. We just want to identify the outer boxes. After we do that, then we start, can start inserting the values. In this case, uh, we'll try to we'll process the first part over here, which is indicated in this part, in this line. So if you can see, um, we immediately take the value here, and this goes here. And then after that, uh, we'll replace, we'll replace x, <coughs> Then we'll get this part over here, right? And then this uh, this part over here, oops, my goes here, right? This is a function, and then this this is a function lambda z is z, and then it takes, and then this is the input parameter, and then this one goes here, right? And then uh, you just replace z. 
into it, hence it becomes just lambda y. One, I insert y one into one, and then you get y, then you get one. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, you check on your question, I'll answer it later. So this is a bit confusing as usual. I'll uh, try to do it my way and you can you guys you can just pick like, whichever which way you want. So in this case, um EHA, I'll explain that later. <coughs> as you can remember, my the way I do it usually is I will if the I see and lambda, so I, I will usually replace it to something else. So in this case, I replace, for example, I replace this as theta. Theta is lambda z equals to z, and lambda y. It, I'll replace this as gamma, so lambda y equals to y. Okay, so I'll start with lambda x equals to x gamma. And then I have uh, theta over here. And then I have one. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to insert the value of uh, gamma into theta. So in this case, I have the value of x gamma. Okay, um, x gamma, right? And then, um, yeah. Okay, x gamma, after that, uh, because x is theta, I'll replace the value into theta, theta gamma, right? Now, as we have theta gamma, right, uh, we're gonna, now I think what we can do is we can expand it a bit. So in this case, we can see the value of theta. Theta is uh, lambda z equals to z. So we're gonna replace that. Gamma. Now, uh, what we can do is we can insert the value of gamma inside. So I'm going to use yellow for consistency. Okay, so after that, uh, lam uh, lambda z equals to z. So if I insert gamma, it will just give me gamma. Right. So I'm I'm already done with this part. I've already simplified it to the most basic part, which is gamma. Oh, actually, it includes here. So what's left is only this part. So gamma 1, I'll replace gamma with the actual lambda. Lambda y equals to y. Okay. So I insert 1 into it. Lambda 1 is 1. And hence, it will give me 1. Okay. I hope my explanation was clear and yeah, I think there was some people that's being disruptive in the chat. But then I do hope that um, <clears throat> you guys understood how it breaks down. Lah. Um, generally, it's less, the steps are less procedural than what the prof teaches, but then both ways are correct. Lah. It's just like a teaching style. I'm sorry if this is a stupid question, but how do you, how do you to sub in theta into x? How do you know how to? Okay. Um. Wow. Um. Uh. Okay. Actually, that's a very good question. Uh. Okay. So generally, right. Uh. When we have a lambda. I think uh, I'll use a different brand. If you have a lambda like this, right? Lambda like this. Imagine lambda is somewhat like a predator. So like if you see a lambda like this, right? And lam the lambda is already in the very outside uh, lambda, right? Then it means that this part over here is actually waiting for a prey to be predated. It's looking for a prey to eat. So in this case, right? When we have a lambda and we already have this, right? It's just, it's looking for something to consume or something to eat. So in this case, we'll immediately look for what's next. What's the bracket next to the lambda, which is in this case, theta. Hence, this part over here, right? We'll try to eat this part. 
this predator will eat this prey, this poor soul theta, and then eat it and churn it and uh, you can say shit this part out. This is the fecal matter. In this case, it's theta. Okay? So you can imagine that this is actually a predator. In fact, another way to think about it is, you can actually think it of another way. Let me try to erase this. Make it cleaner. Right. If you want to go it a little bit extreme, what you can do is, you can actually uh, substitute this as a variable again. But then it's quite pointless. Uh. Say I... Uh, say this part right is omega right so omega is equals to lambda x x gamma so we have omega theta 1 as so we evaluate this then we know omega is this so we immediately insert so this value will be evaluated as theta gamma so technically you can substitute it into another variable but then if you substitute it into another variable, right, it will be oversimplified and it basically does nothing. Lah. So I guess when you are, I think when you know you kind of need to insert it is when you kind of feel that, oh yeah, it's actually, you know, um, when I substitute it with another variable, it just does nothing. So you know, that, you know at that point, right, okay, you kind of need to start inserting the values. Is that clear? The value 1 is stacked to y. Um, okay, I will strongly discourage you guys to actually think that, okay, where does this value go to? Is it x? Is it y? Is it z? Because having that kind of mindset, right, really gives the wrong impression of lambdas. Like, yeah, eventually the values, this value, right, will go in somewhere in the process. But then if you try to think of, like, how, where does it go to, right, it will actually confuse you because like sometimes the lambdas are very complicated. So the best way is actually just like to do it manually, process it from left to right. Instead of trying to think like where does this one goes to? I forgot about the brackets since I am initially confused. Oh, the brackets are incredibly important. Like the brackets right are super duper important in lambda expressions. So in this case, what I gonna what to, to do the brackets, right, what you want to do is simply just like see the outer brackets. Lah. So in this case, the brackets that are important are this bracket, this bracket, and this bracket. Another tip on doing lambda expressions is that you can use different types of brackets. You have the standard brackets, you have the square, square brackets, you have the angle brackets, I don't know what bracket is that, and you have the curly brackets. You use whatever brackets that you can use. So like in this case, if you want to make it clearer, you can actually use like square brackets and then perhaps like a triangle bracket here and then a curly bracket to make things clear. Okay. And so once you got the brackets right, I think it's already pretty not pretty easy, but it's pretty more clear. Lambda expressions can get confusing really easy. That's why the key here is actually to try to make keep make things clearer by actually substituting lambdas. When you see a lambda substituted into another variable, even when there's another lambda inside of it, and try to make the brackets clear. Okay. Any questions? If not, I want to answer Yechia's question earlier. Why is it not missing positional? Any questions on this? Okay, uh, damn it. If there are no questions, uh, can I get a thumbs up? All right, wonderful. Um, Okay, okay, so, um, okay, I, I, later we can, 
discuss more later on. Um, uh, we can talk more. On, we can discuss more PE questions, later, uh, midterms questions later. But I think for now, I'll just answer a, briefly a bit on DHS question earlier. Like, uh, why does it it return positional error? Oh, okay. Is it because the first lambda does not require positional argument yet? Uh, correct. In this case, right? Um, in this case, it's does yeah. Um, uh, yeah, correct, correct. So positional error, right? Positional error. Uh, where is it? Uh, why is it not missing positional? Positional error only occurs when it actually starts to consume, uh, variables or uh, consuming input. So in this case, right, if the x is called like this, or perhaps we call like x one two three like this, then this will produce an error. But if you just present it as x like this, right, it's it's not consuming anything yet because there are no brackets at the end. Because there are no brackets at the end, it does not consume anything. It's still not eating anything. Hence, it cannot give positional error as well because we haven't evalu evaluate the arguments. Okay, so I think that clears things up. Yeche, does it clear things up for you? All right, wonderful. Okay, so we have... All right. All right, thank you, Nick. Wonderful. All right, um, so that's the end of the higher order function tutorial. Here we are. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, so an expression always looks for a value in the immediate bracket and only goes to the next bracket when it needs another value. Um, you can say something like that. Yes, an expression always looks for a value. Not an expression, a lambda. Yeah, lah. correct, correct. In a sense, it is correct. It will always look for a value in the immediate bracket. Mm. But then, uh, as I say, try to simplify the expression first before you actually consume the value. Because if you just like try to, if you try to like just like insert all the values all at once, right? Things can get out of hand really fast, and once it just spirals out of control, it's really hard to understand what happens next. So try to simplify before you eat. You know, it's just like you wanna go for on a diet first. You wanna like lose weight first before you eat more. So you don't want to eat more arguments when you, you yourself are still complicated and very big. Try to simplify, go on a diet first, try to remove some parts, then you can consume more arguments. All right. So um, technically, that's the end of this tutorial. So um, because we're talking about higher order functions, perhaps what I want to discuss first is if there are any PE questions that are that you guys are confused. Re uh, midterm questions that you're confused. Sorry, I misspoke a lot of times. If there are any midterm questions that you're confused on, on higher order function, please just send it here. Okay, la, uh, I guess any midterm. If we have time at the end, we'll try to discuss on PE questions, okay? I'll just go fast on the PE questions. If we don't have time to answer or discuss on PE questions, you guys can watch my tutorial My tutorial for T5. Uh, I actually discuss on PE with T5. Um, okay, okay. Uh, it's okay. La. I, I guess we can just discuss this then. Can you send the slides or something? I think the prof will upload the slides. Um, I promise, I promise for this tutorial, I'm gonna up upload it right after the tutorial ends, I promise. Okay, we are, let's, let's talk about uh, Derek's question first. So we have this uh, dev bar, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I guess what we wanna do is we'll evaluate the value of A first. So we have bar, oh, bad pen, color. Uh, hey. Bar one, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, I think so. Uh, I think uh, try to underscore the argument. So this is x, this is y, this is z, right? So bar returns uh, x plus y 
plus z. Okay, so now we'll replace x first, which is one plus y is it is this, and z is this thing. Okay. So this is z, this is y, this is x, which is correct. So when we combine them together, it should be 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. This should be the value of a. Now, the question is, uh, we would want to print bar again, but the value is a1, a2, a3, okay? Um, Let's try to analyze first. A1 is, so it stops at 1, so the value it should be just 1. A2 should be 1 and until 2. And then A3, A3 till the end is 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's basically just 1, 2. So now we've got, got this, let's do another bar. Bar 1, 1, 1, 2, and lastly is a bit complicated, just a tuple inside a tuple. So gonna highlight the arguments again. Ends with this, you can actually evaluate it where uh, x, x is basically, oops, my bad. Gonna write it again x, y plus z, x. The value of x is 1, a tuple of 1, y is 1. 1 plus 2 plus z is a tuple and z, the value of z is another tuple, another tuple. So it's a bit a lot of inceptions. So in this case, when we sum them up, we have 1 and then 1, 1, 2. Oops. And then, okay. Okay, I see five messages. I'm so sorry, I was doing this. So it's a bit complicated lah. Why A3 have the, have a comma at the back? Um, no, A3 have a comma because this is string slicing. Remember, if you slice right, means the return will also be a tuple. Okay, even if there's only one item. Okay. Mm. Because if there's no comma, it means that this is not a tuple. Okay, I'll try to see Jonathan's answer. Uh, try to see Jonathan's uh, question. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, I'll, I'll put this later first. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll talk about Jonathan's question after this. String slice. Okay, I think it's good. Everyone's got, got this clear. You guys can see this in my recording, so I'll just re erase it. Okay, next question is from Jonathan. Uh, we have this question. I, I believe this looks from 1010S. I'm glad that you guys actually look into 1010S question. Oh boy, I, I hope I have a strong heart to do this. Okay, so... We have i equals to 7, All right? we'll initiate i equals to 7, and then suddenly, suddenly i is uh, replaced by this value. So then after i is 7, we don't care. We're going to start with i equals to 0, okay? Now we're now going to evaluate. Um, i is not, um, i percentile, uh, i modulo 5, greater than 3 is false, so it doesn't break. 
i modulo 2 equals to 0 is true. Hence, i uh, i is i minus 1, is means 0 minus 1 is equals to minus 1. And then continue. But when we say continue, right, it means that it goes to the next loop. So it means that the value of i here will be updated. So here in this case, it does not follow this i, but it's going to be following the i above here. i equals to 1. Again, we'll do i modulo 5, which is false. Uh, i modulo 2 equals to 0 is false. Then, then we just like i times 2 is will give us 2, will give us 2 and then we'll print 2. So if this is my output box, it will give me 2. Next, gonna be i equals to 2, which we know is just gonna be like i equals to 2 minus 1, which is 1, and then continue. i equals to 3, it's gonna give me 6. Hey, sorry, uh, it's gonna give me is it six right yeah six and then next is i equals to four now here is the case where i i modulo five is greater than three is true as it breaks so this entire loop is done let's cross them up and this time this the last state is i equals to four as i printed four Okay. Okay, Jonathan, uh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, Adrian, you have another question. Let me see. Okay, uh, that's how you do it. In fact, right, when it is in CS and that S, right, this is the, the way you kind of, kind of expected to do. So you are expected to, you know, like, right, for I is 0, I is 1, I is 2, I is 3, I is 4. So that uh, you guys can actually, we can actually understand how it, changes uh. negative one modulo five is for um okay there's a question calvin asked like why negative one modulo five is for that one is i'm not so sure i gotta check uh I usually i don't know because it's quite pointless to actually use negative now check the remainder of a negative question Sorry, uh, I'll, I'm not so sure with that, but I'll try to find look for information if you're still curious. Anyways, we have this question. One e, okay. Uh, one e. Um, we have two things, twice and thrice. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so we have twice and thrice here. That's Let's write it first. Okay. So I guess here, like, we can identify the important brackets are here. These are the two important brackets. Because, like, these are the main outer brackets. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Wow! Bless. Anyways, um, as usual, what I would do here is that you can see that there's something quite complicated here. So I'm going to replace that with uh, a value. Lambda x equals to x plus 5. So now we have price twice that uh, okay. So what we're gonna do is, as usual, we're gonna evaluate this part first. Uh, thrice, twice. Okay, so the procedure is, even though we do it left to right, but then if there's something like this, we do from the inner brackets to outside, okay? So twice, we're gonna evaluate this part first. Twice returns this lambda, lambda x, f f x so it's going to be like theta theta x okay uh, 
a bit complicated. We're gonna replace that with gamma. Lambda x, theta, theta x. So fries is gonna evaluate as gamma. Right, and then fries will give us lambda x, gamma, gamma x. Okay. I think this is okay. We don't have to really substitute this with anything. Now we bring two down. Right. So now we have what we have is uh okay, this one is should be three times actually. Okay. So we have gamma, 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 two, the the okay. We evaluate the inner part first. Okay, so in this case, um gamma two gives us um is Lambda x, theta, theta x, 2. So this one is theta, theta 2. Now we evaluate theta 2 is 7. Right, and then theta 7 is 12. Right. So hence this part is 12. We have gamma. Repeat the process again. Gamma 12. It gives us like theta, theta 12. And this is theta uh, 17, is it? I'm bad at math. Um, then 22. This one breaks into 22. And then now we have theta 22 is um, gamma, uh, gamma 22 is theta, theta 22. Theta 22 gives us 27. And theta 27 gives us 32, hence 32. No, it's not infinite. So yeah, I mean, okay, for this part, right, if you kind of got the gist of it, right, if you kind of like, you know, understood, uh, you get the intuition, you can kind of can see that what gamma does is actually is plus 10. We can prove that by actually trying to expand this. So like theta x equivalents to theta x plus 5. And then if we insert this, it will be like x plus 5 plus 5, which is x plus 10. Okay, so you kind of can simplify gamma into lambda x, x plus 10. Okay, you kind of can do this, but in this case, what I did, I didn't do that. What I want to show you is that sometimes you just don't, don't need to care what is the value of the lambdas. How does the lambda evaluate? Sometimes you just can just trust it and put it into a variable and just trust the process of inserting the values one by one. So in this case, I do this. But if you want to simplify it, sometimes you can, okay? There's no, there's not much hard rule. The only way to do it is just by doing a lot of practice. Can you explain again how you sub all the twice and thrice function with theta and gamma? Um, is there a fast way to okay okay wait i'm answering the discussion um can you explain how you sub um just sub law like i'm not so sure what you mean by how do you sub you just basically like um see there's a complicated part say for example um at this part over here you see it's complicated we will just replace the entire part by theta but don't forget to actually take note of what does theta represents You know, it's like those those math variables. So like, you know, like y is equals to 3x plus 5 and then z is equals to 5y plus 2. So then like z, you can replace y with 5, 3x plus 5 plus 2. Same logic. Is there a fast way? What if they ask like try, try, try? Um, Okay, there is somewhat a fast way. Okay, usually these questions, right, correct, like for like these kinds of questions, you kind of need to figure out the pattern. So in this case, right, if you actually see the pattern, like there's no fast way, lah. like the only fast way is like if you can figure out the pattern. In this case, you can see that at every iteration of theta, right, gamma, right, there's plus 10. Because it's plus 10, right, and you do three times, you know that you 10 times 3, 30, so you, 2 plus 30, 30 lah, 32. The fast, there's no really much fast way. Lah. There's only like, if you can see the pattern, then you can answer it immediately. Okay? I'm so sorry to disappoint, but yeah, there's no like fast way. 
do to it. Any question? Okay, any other PE questions that you guys want to discuss? So basically, the FX in thrice and the FX is in twice. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, there's another question from Jonathan. Let's see. Oh, sorry, uh, Thaddeus. I'm so sorry. Uh, what is twice theta equals to lambda x theta theta? Oh, okay, okay. Let me go back to the earlier question. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we are, we are. Twice theta equals to lambda x theta theta. Oh, um, twice theta lambda x theta theta is because uh, this one, oh, um, twice theta over here, I'm going to replace it with this part, to the return statement. Okay, so yeah, that's the answer to uh, the day is. Oh yeah, we did this one already. Bye-bye. Thank -bye. Okay, uh, meanwhile, I'll download uh, Jonathan's uh, quote, uh, Jonathan's question. Thaddeus, is it clear for you? Like, yeah, I, why it becomes like that? Because uh, I change it with the written statement for the function twice. Oh, okay. What does the following function mix return? Okay. I mean, this is just if else statement. So, um, does anyone want to give it a shot and explain this? It's okay. Um, don't be afraid. Does anyone want to try and explain? Feel free to unmute yourself. Sure, yeah, explain as a C student. Let's see what you got. Okay, uh, I'll just start. Uh, okay. I think this one is easier. Yeah. Let's draw a tree, perhaps.
okay, there's a lot of good, uh, a lot of explanation, explaining. Okay, if you give up, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry. So yeah, generally what you want to do is draw this uh, decision tree. So in this case, uh, we can see that uh, there's all the if-else statements here going. So in this case, right, uh, um, we'll try to evaluate it one by one, okay? So this is the one that I've given to the question. We need to somewhat make inferences here, okay? So in this case, in the first line, in the line over here, we know that x is great, smaller than y and z is smaller than x. Means that in this case, we know that in this case, z is smaller than, oops, my bad, equals to x, smaller than equals to greater than y. Okay, this is the case. So in this case, in this bottom part, right, um, um, x is smaller than y, but then x is smaller than y, and x is also smaller than z. Because it's, it's the opposite, ma. because we know that it is smaller than y and z, we know that x must be the smallest number, must be the last. And then in this case, for this, right, y is smaller than z, but then we also know, right, because it is... It does not go into the first one, it goes into the second one. It must have known that y is not greater than x. y is actually smaller than x. So in this case, we know that if y, since it got rejected from the first flow, and it is also stated that y is also less than z, then it will return y. So in this case, we know that y is smaller than x, y is smaller than z. Okay, so the bottom part, right, the bottom part of the code is actually um, um, not important, I think. Okay, the bottom part of the code, right, we know that uh, y is smaller than x, but then y is greater than z. Okay, so we know that in this case, right, y should be somewhat, I don't know, um, yeah, yeah, uh, y is smaller than x, but then y is also greater than z. Because then uh, it doesn't run both, both parts. So we know that um, it should be something like this, uh, c, y, x. So in this case, by that logic, technically like um, x, x will always be greater than z, whatever it happens, since it will always, it, it will always uh, give us z. Okay, so it's just like you need to uh, try to, you know, uh, break it down lah. Try to create decision trees. When you are confused with if else, right, you need to create decision trees. And uh, when you meet with a, like an if else statement, right, if else, if else, if, on el else if, right, there should be extra conditions that are need to be met to satisfy. Because like usually in else if, right, aside from the statement that is stated, there are additional statements, which is the negative of the previous statements. Because LF will not be executed if the, for, the, the statements before are true. Hence, to, in, so for this to be true, right, to be executed, the former must be false. Okay? I hope that clarifies your question, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, what are you confused of for this? I'm not so sure. Derek? Okay, hi, Matt. Uh, oh, okay. Do you try one by one or not? Um, it depends, okay? It depends on who you are, 
I mean, if you got big brain, right, then you you kind of can figure it, figure it out, lah, how. But then, um, sometimes if you don't have big brains, for example, me, uh, the easiest way is just try it out one by one, lah. Not gonna lie, that's the easiest way out. Just try it out one by one. Okay? Like, sometimes trying it out one by one is faster than actually trying to figure out what's the number, okay? It's actually faster sometimes. Okay, uh... Wah. Yeah, for number eight, it's faster to actually try it out one by one. Yeah, Jonathan, basically just try to visualize it. Yeah, this one, you gotta try it out one by one. Lah. So that's why, lah, like, um, PEs, right, uh, midterms, right, you kind of need to work fast through the questions because it's quite time consuming. Yeah, I'm a bit sorry, but yeah, you kind of need to. F you kind of need to like just like try it out one by one, lah. Legit. Because sometimes trying to figuring it out is just much longer. Okay, just try to uh, answer it. Try one by one. Any other questions? I'm not gonna lie, one hour 25 questions is actually quite short. Okay, uh, friends, if you guys, okay, more questions. Cause like, if you guys have no questions, right, we'll just talk about PE, which is, I, I think at this point, like most of you are already bored. It's okay, it's okay, just shoot with questions. I think that's more important. Ah, wow. Wow, this is wonderful. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, big brain time. Oh boy. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, we got this function twice. As you can see, it's just doing twice. Um, I guess again, uh, I think what this question tries to imply is that what's the difference between the first and two, right? You can see here. So twice, twice, twice. So basically this is two, two questions in one. Lah. Yeah, I'm just going to say theta, lambda x, x plus three. Okay, so uh, I'll do this part first. Twice, twice, meaning that uh, lambda x, lambda x is going to be like twice, twice, x, which is okay. I'll leave it as it is. And then this twice theta. Uh, 
um, I'll try to insert it. Whether uh, yeah, I'm trying to insert it. I think. So we have twice, 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 theta. Okay. Now we got that along the out, out of the way. Uh, maybe now it can time to like break it a bit. Um, uh, okay, let's think of a good way to break. Um, okay, generally if we break this part, there are two ways. Uh, either we break this first part or we break this. Now we see right, if we break the second part right, it will actually just do nothing because it will just give us like lambda x, theta, theta, x. It's pretty pointless lah. So we're not going to break that. Uh, what we're going to break is actually we're going to break the first part. But then to break the first part right, it's going to be quite complicated because the input is quite long. Hence, I'm going to represent this as gamma. Gamma is twice, twice, theta. So I'm going to have twice gamma 2, okay, which will give me like uh, lambda x, gamma, gamma x, 2. I'm going to insert it, so I'll get gamma, gamma 2. Now here's when you want to start to break things up. Now let's see if we break this part. Uh, gamma twice uh, twice theta two. Now uh, we should break. I think we should break this. I think gamma. Um, okay, I'm gonna represent this as uh, omega instead. So uh, omega, omega two. Okay, in this case, omega two is twice theta. Oh my god, ah, so much. So yeah, da 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 Uh, okay, uh, I guess we need to break it. We need to break this part first. So, um, twice theta is, uh, lambda x, theta, theta, x. So, in this case, like, theta, theta, x, lambda, then you have two. We can insert the two inside finally. So we have theta two. Oh my god, finally theta. Mega gamma. So theta two will evaluate to five. And then so yeah. Theta theta two. Okay, 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 okay. I think let's try to simplify things a bit. Uh let's try to simplify it a bit. So in this case, um Okay, okay, so yeah, it's getting complicated. Um, let's try to simplify things a bit. I think we use the earlier strategy when we use C twice or twice, we'll try to simplify things a bit. So in this case, omega is twice theta theta. In this case, so it's like um, x, uh, it's uh, lambda x theta uh, theta uh, x, which actually can evaluate to x plus 3 plus 3. So hence, it's lambda x is x plus 6. At least we got this going. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, here we are. Let me... Uh, 
Okay, since this is omega, like gamma is like uh, plus omega, you can simply replace this by x plus 6. Gamma is twice x plus 6, right? Because you know twice is like um, basically doing it twice. So what we're going to do is like uh, lambda x equals to x plus 6. So gamma is like uh, lambda x. Um, say this is like uh, I find a new variable c. Say c. C is uh, lambda x x plus 6. Uh, basically, we have c, c, x. So in this case, we know that in this case, uh, c, x is plus 6. So this will yield us plus 6. And then um, another c, x plus this is going to give lambda x is going to give us x plus 12. Okay, gamma. So in this case, we have, we, we have this part over here, gamma, gamma 2. Gamma 2 is 2 plus 12, it should be 14. And 14 plus 12 is 26. Okay, I didn't see. Is it correct? 26. I'm... Okay. Okay, okay, so... Okay, okay, I think for this kind of question, right, the strategy is like, yeah, okay, this is when a substitution gets so bad. So in this case, like, you kind of want to simplify your substitutions as well. So I guess when you deal with questions like twice or thrice in this case, like, you kind of want to substitute it as well. Okay, to be fair, like, this is kind of like two questions instead of one. So, like, uh, yeah, like, this is two questions instead. Okay, if I got it wrong, uh, yeah, I got it wrong. Uh. I mean, it's a bit messy. I would kind of start over from zero. Two to the power of three, eight. Okay, no, same. Uh, I got 26 as well. Fair, two, four, eight. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay, where's the other question from Jonathan? So, yeah, um, there are, I mean, like, this is the beauty of uh, lambdas, I guess. Like, there are no, like, right way to do it. In this case, like, what I did was, like, uh, try to simplify my substitutions as well because it, it's already getting out of control. But then, uh, yeah, lah, like, you got, I guess, be, be, think, like, if you're already, like, getting more complicated, it means that you need to simplify some parts first. Yeah, I think it's a good decision to flex first. Okay, uh, there's this question. Uh, X is the no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, if what is true, it means that you kind of need to evaluate the value one by one. Lah. Okay, A is not right because technically like the code is correct like there's no wrong Wallow, the chat is noisy again Wallow. the second statement b is like a runtime error will occur if user input is zero then you can just simply need to input zero if n not equal to zero zero right uh wait what This one is false. This one should be short secreted. Okay, I don't understand why it's B highlighted. Oh. C is correct, because technically if you input five, like it, this will be skipped. Right, will be will be skipped and you'll go straight here. So five, twenty modulo five is zero. This one is not. Uh... 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, I understand why P is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as Derek mentioned, scanout modulo zero. Yeah, yeah. Because okay, so in this case zero, like in this case, right? Um, when I input zero, right? Uh, n is zero. This zero is false. Hence, this part will be skipped. It will be short circuited. It will jump into this part. Twenty modulo zero, which is impossible. You cannot divide by zero, lah. Hence, it's gonna produce an error. It's not exactly a yeah runtime error. Is basically just error, lah. So it will it does produce an error, but the error is produced here, not here. I'm not so sure whether it's zero division error though. I kind of forgot. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the zero division error. I think that one was. I, I think the prof just gave it correct because, like, technically it's an error, and like students are not expected to know whether it's an error or not. Yeah, I think the reason why it was given correct because, like, it was the error was not clear. It is correct. It is a zero division error. But then, like, yeah, it's correct not because it is a, a runtime, but then it's just an error. So I think like the prof really what the prof really wanted was C, but then like people arguing like B is technically correct. Cause this can this can be considered as runtime error. Like um I don't I um yeah, let me check. Because if I recall correctly, right, a uh, runtime error only exists in Java. Like Python does not know runtime error. Okay, if you got a question, just send it in the Zoom chat. Uh, because like if I co recall correctly, right, I think it's it doesn't have a runtime error, so yeah. Because I know there's runtime error in Java, but I'm not so sure in Python. Okay, yeah, yeah, Python does not have a runtime error. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, there is an exception on runtime error. Okay, like, I think the prof is just like, it's gonna let them slide runtime. Okay, runtime error is raised when an error is detected that does not fall in any of the other categories. So, so okay, that's why like it's quite rare to have runtime error in Python. No wonder. Okay, okay, that question. Okay, uh, the dictionary question. Can you actually send the entire question or say screenshot? Because I don't have it. I don't have the options with me. I cannot remember, like a lot of people ask this actually. Why is the last option false? Okay, uh, let's see. So we have this dictionary over here. Right. So at this point, like number one is indisputably true. Number two, right? Um, this is true also. But also, what happens here is that um, is removed. But when this part is evaluated, um, dig tree pop actually removes it, lah. Like um, dig pop actually removes the statement. So what happens here is that uh, at the last part, right, um, the first pop removes dict one. Hence, 
value of z does not exist anymore. Adds max dict dot values will evaluate to our un because z is gone. Yes, that's the explanation. Yes, yeah. Yes, pop. Remember, pop actually removes. Pop removes the value. Pop removes the value from the dictionary. Okay, yeah, thanks. Pop was, okay, Pop was covered in tutorial, but I asked you guys just to read through the slides. I didn't really talk about Pop in depth. Pop removes key and value, right? Yes, Pop really removes it. Pop, in fact, right, Pop is actually also in list as well. Dick, by default, you give the key, right, unless you do tick.values. Correct, correct, Mel. Okay, there's 13 minutes left before my next lecture. So please, uh, any final questions? Any other questions? I still don't understand. Nani. Why a tuple cannot be in a tuple? What do you mean? Ah, uh? uh, that question. More like, you know, like A, B, C cannot be in. String is quite unique, lah. Because if you want that, it means that you need to like do like uh uh Uh, this one is true. Yeah, string is quite unique lah. Because string is quite a very unique nature. Yeah, I think string is the only exception, I think, yeah. I would ask uh, another twice choice question, okay. I think tw another twice choice question, right, I would recommend you guys to try it on your own because like you guys can just like, uh, you know, use it for practice. Then just ask me via Telegram if you guys are confused.
come on. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Oops, my bad. I'll do it. Uh, okay, so where's my pen? Ah. Uh, okay, so we have REC. One, two, three, four. Empty string. So if STG means it's true, so it will return press STG one over, so two, three, four. And then ACC is a uh, ACC plus A, ACC is empty, so it's going to be just A, and then plus B, and then rec, uh, oh sorry, this is not 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, A, A, plus B, plus B, okay, I think I'm going to use a different color. This is a new call. Okay, the next call is going to be REC for AAA B plus B plus B. And then next up, we have yellow, which is an empty string now. AAA B. Sorry. B. 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 All right. And lastly, we have it will just return ACC. So in this case, ACC is AAA. AAA. -A -A plus all the BBBs. And so we got AAA -A -A -B, B B B. All right. Uh, do you get it, Yeche? Yeah, you just need to expand lah. All right. It's not that hard, right? Recursion. You just need to expand. Okay. Okay. Uh, I got like a very few minutes. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also blessed to have you guys as my students, don't worry, I'm, I'm also blessed beyond grace, so. No, Derek, you didn't choose this tutorial slot, this is not your tutorial slot. Okay, okay. Okay, anyways, those the rest of you who are in this tutorial that has been relatively silent, do you guys have any question? The silent majority, I appeal to you, do you guys have any questions? Uh, Ethan, Muhammad, Adele, Jeremy, Hawi, Lim Yu Chong, Cassandra, Mutu. I, I, I really don't want you guys to, you know, like come to this tutorial and like feel like you guys are wasting your time because you don't learn anything. I really do hope that when you come to this tutorial, you actually learn something. Yeah, because like, seriously, like, there's no, seriously, there's no tutorial participation, there's no attendance, seriously, you, you can spend your time more productive somewhere else if you feel like you don't learn any, like anything here. That's why I really want to make sure that you actually guys learn something. And if you do, can maybe like say something in the Zoom chat, instead of the four people that just keep on saying things in the group. Okay. Um, for your information, uh, tomorrow I will not be waking up early. So if you guys are, like have questions like at 10 or 12, 11 a.m., uh, just for your information, I will be uh, sound sleeping on my bed. I will be sleeping really well. 
Okay. Palau eh, sleep asleep. Okay, so if you guys really need help, I really strongly encourage you guys to, you know, help each other in the Telegram group. If you guys got any question, just feel free to answer your friends, okay? I know everything is online. You guys cannot meet each other in a tutorial setting. But then we can still be together even when we are all apart in our own homes. Okay. Um, cheat sheet, don't, don't worry. Uh, please prepare cheat sheet. Cheat sheet actually can help for midterms. It does help, unlike practicals. So prepare your cheat sheet well. I think you can, you have cheat sheet, right? Am I mis Wait, I forgot. Actually, I forgot. Actually, I forgot. Can midterm use cheat sheet? No, right? No, is it? Holy shit, you cannot use cheat sheet? Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm gonna check later. I'm gonna check later. Okay, okay, you have that. Okay, no cheat sheet then. Uh, good luck then, just good luck. Try to memorize, okay. No, you, I cannot be your cheat sheet. Then, um, just try, just don't forget, uh, try to read through the list, list, the dictionaries, like what are the possible things like pop, insert, remove, learn all the possible functions. Yeah, uh, okay, I really need to leave because my class is really starting soon. So thanks, guys. Um, it's been a great pleasure. Uh, see you in week eight. Okay, just like when the midterm ends, right, just let me know how you guys feel, okay? All right, I'll try to upload the video as soon as possible. Bye, everyone. Good luck.